So far away, Lucas, are you ready to talk some British culture? What is going on? We're talking about Phil Mitchell. So far away, Lucas, as someone who has access to the, uh, the channel's analytics, you can confirm that our audience is primarily American, yes? They're going to be so confused. They are, yes. And uh, so I think the, the figures range from like 70 to 80% of our audience is American. And we're going to alienate all of them by talking about a, a fixture of British telly. British crap telly, I should like uh, clarify. Phil fucking Mitchell. It's all right. Is... You can just say that soap operas are crap. It's all right. So, like, that's the thing. They are crap, but I love EastEnders. Now, I love EastEnders. Now, I've not watched it in years, but when I was a kid, every week we'd watch EastEnders. So for people who maybe don't know, and the Americans who don't know, like Phil Mitchell is a much of EastEnders, which is a long-running British soap opera set on the fictional estate of Walford, is it, in East London? How the fuck am I meant to? <laughs> you don't remember I think it's, it's I, like, I like really haven't watched soap operas. You, if you not, oh, in which case, Lucas, you're, you're ready for it. You know Phil Mitchell, then, right? I'm aware of Phil Mitchell. You're, like you're my aware. family have watched them in the background and stuff. Yeah. There we go. So you're aware of um, the legend that is Phil Mitchell. And uh, is anyone not aware of Phil Mitchell? Americans, but they're about to learn. And the show has been on the air for like 70 years. I want to say. I think it's like older than the British Empire. It might very well be, yes. But, so we're all on the same page. Let's go through his wiki entry here, shall we? So, Philip James Mitchell is the eldest son of Eric and Peggy, played by just, like, the late, great Barbara Windsor. So, like, Joey, like, you know, in that thing when you're a kid and you can't really, like, you know, place faces or anything. Mm, and I see her yeah. on EastEnders, and then, like, around Christmas time, a Carry On movie would come on, and this, like, <laughs> tiny little, like, dolly bird comes out, and she's like, oh, hello, and then a bra flies off. I'm like, is that Peggy? And fling and in. And fling and in and fling. And he's like, it's fucking Peggy. <laughs> yeah. Barbara wins like national treasure. And she was just so tiny. But she plays like this no nonsense landlady mm -hmm. who, who just fucking throws people out of a pub. <laughs> and, like in real life, like Barbara Windsor was like four foot eleven and had size one feet. She basically had hoofs. Like, Barbara Windsor was less than five Subway sandwiches long, and she was telling like Phil Mitchell what to do. Baby. <laughs> you know that's a lie. You know they're not really a foot long. <laughs> He's also the older of Grant and Sam Mitchell as well, the father of Ben and Louis. It don't matter. He's portrayed by Steve McFadden. Fucking legend. And what do you know about Steve McFadden, Lucas? I know that he's Phil fucking Mitchell. Yeah, and... <laughs> this is the thing. We get to now just do something we don't often get to do on the channel, which is embrace how British we are. Specifically, how British and working class that we are. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. I think one of the most requested things we get from fans is for me to speak in my natural Yorkshire accent, which I might very well do if I get excited enough. I try to uh, suppress it as much as I can, but when I talk about like my uni days and just, like, just waking up, getting a cup of tea and watching the EastEnders omnibus with a hangover, and it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just peak British culture. And I can tell, like, you know, British culture as Americans see it is all wrong. Like they like it's always the fancy. It's usually London, which uh, ironically is um, not uh, very fancy for the most part. It's not, and it's ironically where EastEnders is that. But I think because EastEnders shows a view of working class London, mm -hmm. it just feels more authentic, even though it gets so soon. So anyway, we have here. As we buy as well, like Steve McFadden just, like mirrored his on-screen counterpart by being a fucking mess for like two decades, and he kept getting arrested for doing drugs and dogging. What? Oh, the actor uh, did. The actor did, yes. And if people don't know what dogging is, it's where you could go to a car park and bang someone else's wife. And now just imagine... Well, if they don't have to be someone else's wife. You can just be two people in a relationship dogging in the back of a car. If they, you know, it's not George. You know, it takes all sorts. And just imagine you're doing that. Just, just fucking Phil Mitchell comes up and asks if he can rail your missus. Ask if you've got any crack. <laughs> so... Oh, so... So, first appearance, 1990, 20th of February. He has and been acting as Phil Mitchell longer than I've been alive. Yeah, like he has been like, and we have list of appearances here. <laughs> oh, God, when it's a picture in the 1990s. Oh, did he? 
You used to have air, but you didn't have any. Like, boost the thing, you had air, but not a lot. Like, do you like Wayne Rooney tech? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. So, so we have here, like, list of appearances. So Steve McFadden has appeared as Phil Mitchell in 3,288 episodes. Holy shit. From 1990 to 2003, from 2005 onwards, as well as appearing in the charity special Dimensions in Time. Did he like go back and meet his former self or something? He, no, it was a charity special where he crossed over with Doctor Who. So he's a Doctor Who character. Which means that like that's not canon in the EastEnders canon, but I bet it's canon to Doctor Who. I fucking hope it's which canon to Doctor Who. Which means that it, it is canon that like, Phil Mitchell was met a Time Lord. And he probably like threw him out his pub. Oh, and then his other names include Filth Mitchell. Filth Mitchell. Filth. Foul fucking Mitchell. And then Lucas relationships. Oh, my God. Like This is like a relationships list that, like, dwarfs Wolverines. If you have been in a soap opera for 32 years, you have got to have a hell of a long relationship list. So he has had four fiancés. And his romances, like, no one cares about the names we have here. His romances, one, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. He has had 20 different romances, 13 of which are affairs. Holy shit. And that, that, is, what, and that is why he's Filth Mitchell. And then Lucas, like, this is the entire reason we're doing this. I read through this before I told you about it. Mm -hmm. Next section, kill count. <laughs> so I now want you to guess how many people has Phil Mitchell killed? <sighs> Just I guess. Mean, like, it's a soap opera. There he was a few a villain, feuds a and a few murders in there, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, like, seven. So you're going to go for seven, like, murder victims, yes? From Phil Mitchell. Yes. Keep in mind as well, like, for Americans, like, you might not think it looking at the doughy sack of shit behind me. Phil Mitchell was a sex symbol in the UK. Many women had a crush on Phil Mitchell, and that's why Steve McFadden was able to rail so many people's wives in car parks. So, murders and manslaughter victims. So keep count for me, Lucas, here. So the first one, Alan Hall in 1994. That was manslaughter. Okay. You have that one? So he, um, so he set fire to a car lot, and there was a, a vagrant asleep in one of the cars. So his second killing was in 2003, and that's by proxy. Mm -hmm. So he's still connected to the murder, but he didn't pull the trigger himself. Then okay. another one, we'll fast forward another like 14 years here. Um, Luke Browning, unintentionally instigated. Um, 2018, a year later, unintentionally instigated. Then his final like death that he's directly connected to is Dennis Rickman Jr. And it was accidental. So he says, though he never intended to kill his adoptive son um, during a fight with uh, another character who he did not intend to kill, he caused a boat to crash. <laughs> so he crashed a boat into his adoptive yeah. son. And then Luke's, we have, Connected murders and deaths. Oh, it goes deeper. Now Luke's have connected murders and deaths. I'm going to go through these dead quickly and just keep count for us. So we're starting on five, so we have it. Steve Owen. Six. Dennis Rickman. Seven. Tina Carter. Fifteen. And then he's got... So he's got fifteen deaths, either indirectly or directly caused by him. And then we have attempted murder victims. Oh, my God, no. And I'm How many go people through... did he try to kill? So these are these attempted murder victims. And Lucas, I want you to keep count as quickly as you can. So we have to fly through this. So we have Dan Sullivan. One. Dennis Rickman. Two. Ian Beale again. <laughs> Sixteen. Ian Beale again. <laughs> Seventeen. Callum Highway. Eighteen. So that's 18 attempted murders. 15 deaths, was it? Indirectly. How many times did he try to kill one person? Three <laughs> times. And that's the thing right there of... There are, like, serial killers who've not been in directly involved with as many people who've killed. Like, there, are pe there are villains on criminal minds who aren't as, like, deadly as this. And, like, some of them are the same person multiple times. But I think, like, you know, attempting to murder the same person three times is still pretty bad. And that's three separate instances of something that's pretty fucked up. And this is why I love mm -hmm. soap operas, because soap operas operate on comic book logic. That being that, the longer it goes on, the stupider the characters who have been in it since that have to become. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, like, okay, yeah, like every year there might be, like, you know, a tragic event that befalls Phil, but after, like, you know, 40 years on television, they start to get really fucking outlandish. Like, it's like 15 murders. At this point, what's his power grid look like, Carl? That's the, I could Phil Mitchell beat Batman? <laughs> with enough prep time, maybe. No, Lucas, with enough crack. <laughs> Can we talk about the fact, like, this was all, this entire wiki, like, weekday was inspired by a clip our friend sent us while we were playing Smash Bros and just 
A random episode where Phil Mitchell's addicted to crack. Be like, I need my fucking crack. Give me my crack. You, you, you need a doctor. You, you need professional help. What, what I need is... What I need is crack. Which must have been amazing, considering that Steve McFadden, around that time, was in newspapers being addicted to cocaine. It's like, how did he so realistically portray a person hopelessly <laughs> addicted to drugs? He's like, because he was hopelessly addicted to drugs. Oh, dear. He was like, I, I need my crack. Give, give me my crack. And then, like, Lucas, do you want to do some, <laughs> do you want to do some trivia? I, I need to know some trivia so about Phil Mitchell. For the roles of Phil and Grant Mitchell, many actors were screen tested together. Um, right. The, the, the idea being that they would work well together, a strong rapport and physical resemblance. This reminds me a little bit of how they cast um, uh, Dominic Purcell and Wentworth Miller to play um, Lincoln Burroughs and um, uh, Michael Schofield, where Dominic Purcell was not originally going to be cast as um, Wentworth Miller's brother until he turned up on set with a shaved head. And they realised, wow, when you shave your head, you look exactly the same, which is true of like all bald men. That might be true, because like, that's the thing is, I'm thinking, like, the Mitchells don't look alike other than the fact they've got a shaved head. And that's one of the things I love and hate about media, is where to show a character as being related to one another, just like give them the same haircut. Mm -hmm. Right, bald it means they're related. So Steve McFadden, um, who had worked extensively in television before being cast as Phil, um, uh, was cast primarily for like, you know, being in shape and his skills with stage fighting and his, and his familiarity with a variety of sports, including mean, boxing, football and karate. Oh, right. Phil Mitchell uh, like, canonically knows karate and Ross Kemp got the role of Grant because they worked well together and shared similar physical characteristics such as a round open face and a big round head, a big bait being shaved head. I do feel like Steve McFadden got the, the short under the stick having to, you know, side up to Ross Kemp, though. Because Ross Kemp's fucking massive. He's, ju he's just, like, a scary man, isn't he? He just looks rock hard, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, he looks like he'd fuck you up. And then Steve McFadden kind of does when he's in the role, because, like, he does play, like, the villainous role very well in early seasons, but as he got older, and it's just, like, you know, round-faced Steve McFadden, and he's all red <laughs> and wheezy, so you yeah. don't really buy him as, like, a, a guy who'd kick the fuck out of you. As of 2022, Phil has the highest number of cliffhangers, um, known by fans as the Duff Duffs. Just oh, okay. The, duh, duh. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Which we're gonna have to put in, because that's like such a, a strong gimmick. Oh well this, well this video is getting demonetized. Fucking BBC's up our ass. They will be we need to do it. We need to end this episode the dun 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 dun, dun, dun. We should have just have... ended it right there. <laughs> <laughs> he says it, Lucas, are you ready? The character of Phil is arguably one of Soap's most popular, particularly with female viewers. Making him one of Soap's unlikeliest sex symbols. So what we need to do now is get a picture of just Phil Mitchell from the latest season with sex symbol written underneath it. <laughs> After throwing the entirety of the pub out onto the street, he screamed at the top of his voice, I am the community. <laughs> <laughs> I am EastEnders. <laughs>